What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We're back doing another preview video for round five of the Rugby World Cup. This one's going to be for France versus Italy. A very exciting game this week. This weekend's full of actually really fun games. Round four was a little bit like meh for me. I, I didn't really have a great deal of enjoyment over the course of some of the rugby because it felt like one team dominating the other team so much. France versus Italy though is a game, you know, we see a lot going on in the Six Nations every year of course and the, the most recent Six Nations, Italy really pushed France they put them right up towards the end of the uh, end of the game and you might think maybe this one might be a little bit closer with that but of course last week we saw Italy play New Zealand and that uh, that was not a scoreline uh, in that favour. So it's currently a little bit hard to work out where Italy are at in uh, going into this one. Uh, so as we do in the previous videos, we're going to have a run through of the teams that have been announced for both sides. Who we think some good picks, some bad picks, some thoughts. Now we think this game might go. And finally, of course, given that all-important score prediction, that I'll be wrong by miles because I always am. Uh, if you enjoy this video, make sure to uh, drop it a like, do the subscribe, do all the fun YouTube algorithm things that we all know and enjoy. Starting out then with... France. Now, France didn't play last week. They had their uh, their bye week last week. They played the weekend before playing Namibia. Uh, absolutely crushing that game in terms of the scoreline, but it came at some costs, right? Antoine Dupont fracturing his cheek um, and uh, still out for this one, hoping to get him back in um, in those quarterfinals and stuff. It's the risk you do when you put on such a massive team um, against, you know, a team you're, you're probably odds on favourites to go in and get the bonus point in against. Anyway, they went for the massive team, wanted to work on a bunch of things in that game and uh, unfortunately a couple of injuries coming along uh, along their way we did see the return though of a couple of, uh, of key players that came back into that French side performed very well people like Jonathan Darnty coming back in um, and Cyril Bay, both of whom making a, an appearance in this game as well so in terms of the team that's been announced uh, there's not really a lot of changes to talk about from the team that played that Namibian side so expecting France to uh, to go for this one they might have seen what New Zealand did to uh, to Italy last week and maybe they're thinking we can go for a similar sort of scoreline and put out a uh, a monster team Italy we hoping for a big bounce back in this one so in the front row starting the same as we did against Namibia Cyril Bay, Malvaca and Antonio uh, going in that front row the uh, the scrummaging situation the set piece situation for Italy last week um, really struggling under the weight of New Zealand this is a big old uh, French front row they're still missing out on you know Julian Marchand in there but Malvaca has been playing extremely well um, over the course of this World Cup so at the minute for me he would be the first choice hooker going in there as well well, so this is, for me, as it stands with injury concerns and stuff, probably the best front row France have to offer. In the lock department, Cameron Wilkie goes in alongside of Thibaut Flamand. Still no Paul uh, Paul Valemse. Tau Pfeiffer Nua is going to be on the uh, on the bench for this one. I'm hoping we get to see these, these lads play for a little while. I'm trying to think back to the Namibia game. I feel like there was an injury that caused Cameron Wilkie to come back on after he was um, substituted off. Um, but I do like this lock combo for them. Uh, Thibaut Flamand. I don't think we've got to see him run quite as much as we did in the Six Nations get his hands on the ball and you know charging up the field we haven't seen quite as much of it um across this world cup maybe against italy when uh, those gaps begin to open up you can never uh, never rule him out from getting a, a cheeky little breakaway himself and then in the back row uh Jelon goes in alongside of charles olivant and gregory aldrit so uh, no francois cross this week and uh, charles olivant taking over as captain of course um with no antoine dupont out on the field either but again in terms of back row this for me is looking like the biggest back row that, um, that that France probably have there targeting this game. You'd have to say, with no disrespect to the rest of the teams that are over in, in Pool A, um, New Zealand and Italy were the two biggest competitions for me uh, going up against France. So they managed to beat New Zealand at that opening weekend. Italy's technically their biggest game, and they've just come off a, a week of not playing. So, you know, there's no real reason to not put out the uh, the biggest team for this one. Just cement that you're finishing first. Um, you know, Pool B's got a lot of tough competitors. That one still hasn't organised itself yet. It's who you're going to be playing but they'll be wanting to get in there on the best front foot going with a bit of momentum behind them having got a good win against Italy um, just give you that motivation to keep going on into the uh, the quarterfinals in the halfback partnership Maxime Lucou comes in alongside of Matteo Jalibert like we've already mentioned uh, Antoine Dupont out with that uh, that facial injury we might still be seeing him in the quarters uh, maybe in the semi-finals he might be wearing a mask we're not quite sure what that's going to end up being uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing him back on but Maxime Lucou I don't really know who would be the the, the second choice scrum half for so long it was Baptiste Sarin um, but uh, Kouyou stepped in after uh, Dupont injured his face and 
I thought actually had a really nice game to seal out that game um, against Namibia. But Luku and Kuyu for me, are, they're, they're kind of on a similar level. I'm not even sure who the French team are actually favouring. Let me know in the comment section who you would pick um, as your first choice scrum half with Dupont out in this uh, in this team. In the centre partnership then, Jonathan Darnty goes back in alongside of Gael Ficou. Um, again, this is the best centre partnership they have. Jonathan Darnty got over for two tries, right, versus Namibia. Um, again, in the breakdown situation, coming back in, he wanted to, to land that game with a bit of force. Got some good turnovers, got two tries in that game. Um, looking brutal in that uh, that inside centre position. And then finally, in the back three, the same as we got to see against that Namibia side again. Louis Bielbiari, uh, Damien Pinot, and Thomas Ramos coming in in that fullback shirt. So uh, kicking opportunities. To be fair, New Zealand got a, a number of the kicks over, but they were scoring so many tries, they weren't even considering. The, uh, the penalties, so uh, maybe in this game Tomo Ramos will just take a couple of threes to start them off, uh, but if that game goes anywhere like what we saw with New Zealand oh boy, it's going to be uh, going to be conversions from tries, uh, and hopefully we don't get to see that, because hopefully it's not going to be a, a blowout game, I fancy watching uh, some real close tooth and nail game of uh, game of rugby. In terms of the uh, the subs for this one then, Bulgari goes in alongside of Wardy and Aldegheri, uh, Rust replacement forwards Tafai Fenua and Francois Kors, and then the replacement backs of Kulyu uh, Morfana and Melvin Jaminet. It's beginning to become pretty, you know, set now. This this French team. I'm uh, I'm liking what they're building towards. They've played across the World Cup warm-ups. They test out a couple of new players. Uh, they brought in people like BLBRE, you know, young lad, low caps, brand new. Get him in, bit of energy. They were testing these people out. Who's going to take those last spots in the team across the World Cup? They put out the best team they had going up against New Zealand. And then it feels like across the rest of the pool games, they've really cemented who's in each position, who deserves that uh, that starting team now, um, as well as a couple of people coming back from injuries and stuff as well. So this team's building up to be pretty solid. This is about as big as the French team gets in terms of that 1-15. to 15. Bar, of course, some injuries, you'd probably be looking at someone like, you know, Julien Marchand at the at the hooker. Um, maybe a lot of people might want Paul Valemsa to be in, in the lock department and maybe... Um, a, a different winger. Maybe some people would pick Villiers over BLBRE, but he's he's been impressive in, himself in terms of the attack. Maybe you pick Villiers for defensive sides because he, he gets involved with the defensive cycle well, and then, of course, uh, Antoine Dupont. But uh, in terms of injuries and who's available, this is a, a really, really solid-looking French team. Uh, to go on to play Italy, like I said last week, of course, played that New Zealand team. They lost that one by a lot. 70-odd points by the end of it. They conceded 96 um, on the board, which is a yeah, big old score. I did do a, uh, a poll out on the channel just for general curiosity. There was no right or wrong answer. Um, talking about the, the concept of like these blowout games that we have in the World Cup. Now, it wasn't so much targeted at Italy. Um, it was a bit more about, you know, the, the tier one sides, the tier two sides where it's like 90 nil and stuff. Um, and whether people actually enjoyed them, it seems like actually the majority of you guys who are subscribed to the channel actually sort of like more aligned with like, I'm not really into watching these, these massive teams, you know, destroy um, the lower ranked teams and stuff, uh, which is just interesting to think about, you know, in terms of them wanting to grow the game and how you get more people into the game. If people that are already watching and subscribing on YouTube aren't even necessarily enjoying those games, um, it doesn't bode what too well for uh, the world of, uh, of international rugby and stuff. Now, obviously, New Zealand, Italy wasn't meant to be one of those games. I still thought New Zealand would take that one uh, by quite a lot, but I certainly thought Italy might be a little bit more competitive than they were last week. But in terms of the team for going into this week, then uh, we've had quite a few uh, quite a few changes coming in to going up against this uh, this French team. In terms of the front row, then Ferrari. Fiverr and Ceccarelli going in the front row. So an all new front row compared to what we saw going up against New Zealand. They were obviously not impressed at all uh, by the performance put on against New Zealand. And they've decided uh, all new uh, all new front row coming on. In the lock department, Nicolo Canone goes back in alongside of Frederico Ruzza, one of the people who uh, actually I still thought actually had an okay game against uh, New Zealand, even if it was just for his defensive uh, element, making a lot of big tackles last week. Uh, no Dino Lamb um, in this team at all this week, which... I, I still kind of want to see more from him. I still rate him highly. I mean, maybe he didn't have the greatest game against New Zealand, but uh, Canone's given yellow cards away. Um, so I don't know. I kind of feel like I prefer to have 15 men on the field and uh, and maybe have a couple of things wrong here or there than dropping a man. But uh, hopefully that's a, a positive change for, for Italy. In terms of the back row, then one of the only areas to remain, you know, sort of the same as what we got to see against uh, New Zealand, Sebastian Negri, Lamaro, and the other Canone, Lorenzo Canone, um, in that number eight shirt, um, who again, all three of these, that's working hard defensively trying to get those tackles in uh, but just in terms of trying to get the go forwards and trying to carry the team forward they really really struggled up against that New Zealand team it was really hard to even take away a lot of 
positives from the uh, from the Italy game. They had little moments here and there where they looked they looked in shape and they looked good on the attack, but they spent so much of that game on the back foot. I, I really struggled to it to take a lot of big positives away from that game. Um, in terms of the halfback partnership, then they switched up again. We saw this earlier on in the uh, in the pool stage for Pool A. Uh, Stephen Varney retains in at the scrum half. Tommaso Alan um, moves into the fly half shirt, uh, which means that Paolo Garbisi is shifting back to that inside center alongside of Brex. Um, now this worked for them. Um, I can't think who it was against. Was it against Namibia? Uh, no, it was. It must have been a bit against Uruguay. They uh, they tried this one out, and uh, it did work for them eventually with this this ten twelve angle. And Garbisi actually played very well at twelve, um, and I was a lot more impressed. Um, but you know, I, I think going up against Uruguay and having maybe a bit more room opening up in that second half, and they were able to do a bit more with it. France, I don't see giving you the room. Uh, to be able to do a lot of the, the same things with. So we'll see how that, that switch up gets on. And then finally, in the back three, Monty Juan, he's sitting on that left wing, as he's done all tournament, to be fair to him. Uh, Pierre Bruno comes in on the right wing, and uh, Capuozzo moves to the uh, the fullback shirt. Now, I did say in last week's preview video for Italy uh, versus New Zealand, I I wasn't that impressed by Capuozzo playing fullback. Um, in the in the last game, in the last couple of games I've seen him play fullback in, hasn't really grasped that same element to me. His own stats look great um, in terms of the meters made and, and what he's doing, uh, but the way he slots back into the team when he's playing fullback, I much prefer him out on the wing as a bit more of a solo player and and doing all those things right. I think a fullback is somewhere you need someone to be really dedicated to the team and covering stuff. I'm not too sure about that decision. Um, Pierre Bruno coming in as well. Pierre Bruno. Didn't do brilliantly, right, across the, the Six Nations stuff, right? There was a couple of games where I thought, I'm very surprised he's still getting in the team. Lorenzo Pani has been playing well. Um, and I, I feel kind of kind of bad for him that he's not actually playing this one. I, I feel like he maybe deserves the start in this one. So if they're going to move Capo so back, I probably would have liked to have seen Pani start this one, actually, for, uh, for Italy. But what do I know? I'm not a, a rugby international coach, am I, by any means? Um, in terms of the uh, the substitutions, then, uh, Marco Manfredi will be coming in alongside of Zani and uh, Riccioni, the uh, the only man to survive from the uh, from the front row last week. Rest of the placement forwards, David Sisi and Zuliani uh, will be coming on at some point alongside of the backs of Alessandro Fusco, Morisi, and, uh, as we've already mentioned, Pani, of, uh, of course. Now, going into this one, what do we think about how we think this game is going to go well france i think will be smelling some blood in the water off the back of uh, of that new zealand game seeing what they were able to do against uh, against that italy team putting so many scores on the board um i think france might want to lay down a bit of a marker themselves now the win is the important thing for france right they're already top of uh, pool a getting the wins the most important thing maybe in that first half we could see some three points and what have you um a lot of changes made to that Italian team. and Sometimes cohesion can get lost in that as well. And it wasn't necessarily working the best or anyway, as they were going up against New Zealand. I can see the French forwards looking to put immense pressure um, on the Italian forwards in this game and trying to sort of recreate a little bit what we saw against uh, against that New Zealand squad. Um, you've got Ramos in the back that's going to be kicking threes at any penalty given because, you know, just why not? You kick six or seven penalties, there's 21 points on the board, right? Very hard to come back against a team like France if you go, you know, twenty-one nil down from your own silly, uh, silly penalties and stuff. Um, and then those those backs for for France, I think, look aggressive as well. I'm leaning kind of heavily towards France for this one. I'm not going to lie. I thought that scoreline last week was going to be a little bit closer. Um, and I can see France wanting to double down on this. They've come off a week's rest as well. They're up for this one. They've got uh, a full head of steam behind them. I'm going to say a French win for this one. Um, and I don't think we're going to be seeing a score like we got to see in the uh, in the Six Nations. I'm going to say France by 30. That's going to be my uh, my prediction, guys. Of course, make sure you drop down in the comment section your thoughts on the teams as well as your own score predictions because I do enjoy having a read through them. Of course, make sure you're getting your fantasy teams down, your predictions up on Superbrew, all that good stuff. Uh, there's a lot of very big games going on this weekend. Of course, they're deciding the quarterfinals. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel to know when every one of these preview videos goes up as well as uh, some review videos on the weekend, depending on which games I, uh, I fancy covering or I might plan a little bit beforehand of uh, what some of the bigger games are. And uh, we'll be doing review videos on the channel as well. But I hope you've all enjoyed this one today guys i'll see you all next time bye bye